Hey, ladies, welcome to another self-love conversation. My name is Gloria Ward, and today our guest is Kelly Montgomery. Of course, we're going to talk about all things self-love. She's going to talk about our health and also our mental health. And she's an author. She's an entrepreneur. And we're just so glad to have her here tonight just to give us some nuggets on how we can actually start to live our best life or continue to live our best life. So Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored and uh, so excited. Okay, so my first question to you is, how did you get to this point in your journey where you where you became an author and an entrepreneur? Like, what was that journey like? So I had a pretty rough childhood. I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas until I was about six years old. And my family, my mother and I drove four days from Arkansas to Washington State, which is now where I reside mm -hmm. um, with my two little ones. So it's kind of fun to be a mom. But back in Arkansas, I had experienced some pretty extensive abuse, uh, sexual, mental, physical, and that put me into foster care for a couple days. Everyone that I had ever trusted or known or thought should have loved me abused me mm -hmm. um, along the way during my childhood. And God, I can't fathom, you know, my kids going through that or seeing another child go through that now. Um, so fast forward to when I was about 16, 17, I was pretty heavy into three different eating disorders. And when I say three, I mean really intense, like bulimia nervosa, anorexia, and overexertion and exercise. Those three eating disorders landed me in the hospital where a doctor completely changed my mind. My whole perspective on life changed because I was now presented with a choice. Yeah. Right. Which no one had ever given me because I had always been controlled. I'd always been under someone's thumb. So this doctor looked at me because I, I came in, I thought I was having a heart attack. I was dry heaving. I was, I was not good. And so he gave me two options. He sat me down. He looked me in my face and he said, look, I can tell you're not a bullshitter. So I'm going to give it to you straight. He said, you have these two options. Number one, you can go to treatment. I have the paperwork ready for you right now. Mm. Or two, you can walk out those doors and change your life because I can, I assure you, if you do not, you are either going to be sipping soup through a straw or dead by the age of 25. Wow. So it was really impactful for me. I was deep in that, in the world of eating disorders from the age of 11 years old and up until about 17 and a half. And that's a really long time. So I have some pretty significant scarring within my esophagus. Um, but I am so proud of me for, for, you know, overcoming that. And I feel like that's a really big message for young women all over, especially uh, uh, teens these days. Absolutely. But yeah. Um, so what got me into entrepreneurship, I was already an entrepreneur, but now in like the speaking space and the author space, it was, I woke up on my 25th birthday. Mm -hmm. I opened, I was just dying. <laughs> sorry, <It's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> my son has cochlear implants, so they'll die sometimes and he'll be like, Hey, yeah. um, anyways, so I opened my eyes on my 25th birthday and I was like, wow, what am I doing? You know, like I actually, I, I made it to my 25th birthday. What am I doing? Like, mm -hmm. how can I make a bigger impact? And so that is where Wondrous Woman Rising came from. Um, I'm also a massage therapist amongst other things. So yeah, that's kind of, yeah. it's yeah. like, once you, once you figure out, you know, how meaningful life is, you you do things to make sure that you are living every day to the fullest. And first, thank you for sharing that story because there is a lot of people, you know, who suffer from, you know, eating disorders and 
Do you feel like during that time, did you feel like you were trapped? Because what, what I want the woman who's listening to you to understand that when things happen to you and when trauma happens, the, the stuff that comes after that, the effects of those things, eating disorder, depression, any of those things that happen is that way of either coping or trying to figure out what this whole thing is. What did it feel like? I'll ask you, what did it feel like when you were going through that? Did you feel like this was going to be your life and that was it? Or did you really want a way out? Like what was the feeling in the midst? In the, in the midst of the eating disorders? Yes. I was really heavy. I was, and I, not in like a physical sense, but a spiritual yeah. sense. I understand. I was trying really hard to disappear and be seen at the same time. I understand. That. Yeah. Mm. I and my, my biggest thing was between being so pressed down and unheard and unloved and unwanted, I lost a sense of control, mm -hmm. especially uh, self-control. Mm -hmm. So when you lose sense of your self-control and your mentality and you lose sight of who you are because you've never even known who you are, you find really unhealthy ways to cope. Hmm. And so my unhealthy ways to cope were, of course, the eating disorders, the, the drinking, the, you know, being a not so great kid. Yep. And it was those in those moments with my eating disorders that I felt the most in control, mm -hmm. that I felt the most at home, which is sad to say, but that is, that is that. And I did it out of self-hate rather than, mm -hmm. No, rather than self-love mine mine was mine was drinking and I did it for eight years straight mm. and uh I would drink a, a half a bottle of vodka every day right <sighs> and it wasn't that I thought that it was something wrong it was more of I'm gonna take charge of myself and my life and nobody can tell me what to do and 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 this is going to be the new me where really it is all this insecurity all this anger but you don't know it when you in it right mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is what I try to tell women when you when you don't love yourself you find things on the outside to cope. And it's not like you're choosing this because it's more of what, what feels good to you. What gives you that power that you're kind of sort of looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. me with the drinking, it was that feel good, fun, out you know what I'm saying? Kind of thing. That hit and, a dopamine. Yeah. yeah. And, and I can go ahead and, 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 and enjoy myself and then wake up and still be functional. So I thought, yeah. right. And go on with my life and, and, and be okay. But that, that wasn't the case. And I wanted, I wanted us to talk about that because a lot of women who are in this situation right now, believe that they're taking their life back, that they are doing what they need to do. And it just so happens that they like to drink a little, they like to, you know, binge a little, they like to, you know, do this or whatever it is. And it's okay where you have to be able to get to the root of the problem. Absolutely. Thank God you had somebody who stepped in and the light went off, the bulb went off and you said, okay, I got to make a decision, Absolutely. right? So you, so that's, you make this really decision. Good. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that is like the highlight of every day. Cause wouldn't you agree? That's when your life starts, when you get that aha moment, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There, I couldn't have said that better. Absolutely. Just like the, the power that we provide, like you and I with, with these platforms, 
being able to step in front of groups or even just a singular individual who needs to hear that message and be given the option of choice. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. And we're changing lives by doing that. Absolutely. So how were you able to get into in a relationship and not alone get married? Was that difficult for you or did you really take some time? Mm, so I'm actually I'm divorced that okay. did not that did not end well. yeah <laughs> um, like yeah me like too. most young marriages um me too yeah so I didn't I didn't heal before I got married mm-hmm. and uh I I was actually kind of pushed by religion trauma to get married because I ended up pregnant and uh we had a, a son on the way and we had already had his daughter uh, who I call my bonus baby from his previous relationship. Yeah. And I just felt the pressure that it was time to get married. We had been together a while. Uh, we, we were together for eight years. We co-parent pretty well. And, um, you know, I wouldn't change a thing because I got two beautiful kids out of it, but mm-hmm. I absolutely wish I would have started healing sooner. Um, because just because someone plants a seed doesn't mean you're going to go right away and water it, especially on, girl. Oh yeah. <laughs> especially when you're, <laughs> when you're 16, like you're like, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. You're just going to slightly water it. Like you're going to give it little sips here and there, but you're not going to fully water it. You're not going to take the time to nurture the seed. Like you, like you do when you're, you know, almost middle age or right you know, when you realize what your calling is, you're not going right. to take the time to water the seeds then. So. Right. And, and the, the beautiful thing about this whole thing is once that aha happens and the journey starts, you have to be reintroduced to yourself mm-hmm. where you have to figure out like, yeah, well, what do I like? <laughs> Right. And, and, and what, what is it that I am looking for? Was that a struggle for you trying to reintroduce yourself to yourself? And, and when you started to figure out those things, did you like you? Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a deep one. Yeah, yeah it's so- real. Cause I've been there. Right. So I know. You know. I think it was, it was once I started really healing, right. Once I got deeper into CBD or CBT, uh, EMDR therapy, once I really started moving away all of my family's trauma mm-hmm. and then removing my trauma, you know, it's like an onion, right? right? So when you're healing, you're just like peeling back layers until you finally find yourself in the center and healing my family's trauma. That one was rough. Mm -hmm. And then healing my childhood trauma. Oh man, that was even rougher. But then once I got to the center, you know, like I hated that layer. I hated that layer, but now I'm here at at my layer, at me. And that was really nice. Cause I was like, wow, okay. I'm really nice. Yeah. (laughs) I'm kind of cute. Right. 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 You know, like I like that music. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Like I got, I got a cute smile. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm funny, you know? So I did, I started loving myself a lot and I I could look in the mirror and say, wow, this is Kelly. Mm -hmm. That wasn't Kelly. Right. Right. And and so now when I look in the mirror, I I love, I love the woman that I see. I'm constantly striving to just go the same direction of like getting better and better and uh, growing all together really and not imposing trauma on my own kids or uh, having them carry that on you know Mm -hmm. um so yeah I guess yes the answer is yes (laughs) yeah that was that that was my other question because we we do have some women who just fight so hard to not allow their past traumas to be passed on to their kids but you have some family tradition stuff that you do do that you probably don't know that you're doing like for example um I know a friend of mine uh she was sexually abused 
and you know her child says oh I'm going to sleep at oh no you're not no. <laughs> oh, see we don't do any sleepovers you're not going to anybody's house you're not there. and it's like why all my friends are going no nope. you know my grandmother she was like I was like oh I want to go spend the night at my friend's house is there a man in the house yes nope you're not going all right and and as a child you don't understand why but mm-hmm. as the parent, you like, oh, hell no, because uh-uh. we're not even <laughs> going to open that door, yeah. right? So yeah. you, do you feel the same way? Oh, girl, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very weird about like who I allow my children around Mm -hmm. because it was every single person that my mom trusted Mm. that hurt me the most Mm. right so like my biological grandfather who I don't claim Mm. he was abusive my Mm -hmm. uncles um from his side my even my biological father you know like he my bio dad he actually he almost killed my mom wow he technically killed all three of my my siblings Mm -hmm. and then almost took out me and my mom as well Mm -hmm. and um of course my my siblings they died in utero right um and that that one's a really hard one for me to speak about I understand I understand yeah 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 but that that sexual abuse yeah any form of abuse I, I am so weird about who Mm -hmm. I let around my kids because it is always the people that you trust the most right around your children. And that terrifies me, Mm -hmm. you know? So Mm -hmm. I guess I'm still kind of a control freak in that sense, because you know, we're moms, we want to protect our kids. It's normal. And, and that's what I want. Uh, That's what I want the woman to hear when she is listening to your story and she's on her self-love journey and she's trying to get to herself but she can't understand why she just have this anxiety still when she wants her kids to have the best and be able to be out there with other kids and their friends and everything but in the back of your mind you're like nope 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 no you know what I'm saying woman's intuition that exactly so it's more like you 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 got to be able to continuously to to work through that. Now, the kids don't understand why it's a no, right? But what you're trying to tell them is, hey, you know, we have to make sure the environment is good. And they're like, mom, these are my friends. We in school every day. We have fun. You know their mom. So why can't we go? It's like, baby you too young but (laughs) you know what I'm saying you too young but like I understand you're mad but (laughs) that's right that's right that's right so Mm -hmm. that that was for the woman who is still struggling and battling where she wants her kids to have fun and enjoy their life but at the same time she she knows she has to protect them somehow Mm -hmm. and it's like especially in the environment today like you said it's hard to really trust someone, but as you are on this journey, the more you put in the work, the more it will happen, but it doesn't happen right away, right? Oh, yeah, Just yeah. because you see us saying we're helping, the reason why we can help is because we are on the journey. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, absolutely. A thousand percent. Because we can it's, help. It becomes real hard to, you know, practice what you preach if you're not practicing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So you, you, you have your two beautiful children. Mm. Now you get this spark of entrepreneurship. And so I know that you also wrote a book. How did that come about? Um, so I'm actually, I'm in, I'm in three. So I co-authored in two books. Everybody um, enabled Kelly. Three <laughs> you <gonna> go. <laughs> yeah. So, so my, my first book, um, that one was, that one was kind of a ode, like a farewell to, to the old yeah. me that I finally released, you know, Good. and I, I kind of made it into, um, a little workbook. 
yeah. for for women and girls who are going through what I went through then right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. and that's called call me failure mm. and that has actually helped quite a few uh girls you know and I've actually recommended it to uh, some some gals at the high school that I have talked to who are going through s- similar yeah. life experiences that I went through because mm-hmm. uh, I, I go to high schools and women's penitentiaries and mm-hmm. uh, women's centers and I speak to them and I kind of light them up, you know, give them a reason to move forward for them. Right. Right. So I, I that was my that was my first book. And um then the next one is called Unleash Her, and that's part of through uh, She Rises Studios. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. That one is is also a little paragraph memoir, um, again, to light women up. And yeah. then the other one is um, Les Brown actually foreheaded it. It's called Get Up. Okay. God's not done with you yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's through uh, Patricia Barnes, I believe she mm-hmm. is phenomenal too. Wow. Um, but I have been, I've been truly blessed and I will be 27 in July. So, wow. yeah. So for anybody, I, this is why I, I speak for young women, you know, because hey, I feel, a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I keep uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm 44. I'll be 45. So, you know, you're, you're just beginning your life, which is good because you figured it out early. So that's amazing. I'm trying. <laughs> oh, you do. You doing it. The, the thing that you want to keep in mind is as you're walking this walk, it's always going to, it's always going to be something. The challenges are there to help you grow. Right. Mm-hmm. But you always have to keep in the back of your mind. And this is a question that I would ask you while you walk in this journey, are you happy? I am. I am because I'm, I'm super, like I look at my kids and I'm just, I'm proud, mm-hmm. you know, and I look in the mirror and I'm happy with me. You know, I realize I'm a work in progress. Right. And I feel like everybody should be able to look in the mirror and say, wow, I really love you. Even mm-hmm. though you're a work in progress. I really right. love me, even though I'm a work in progress. Mm-hmm. That's the most beautiful feeling in the world because I feel that being in a society that is so fast paced, that is so focused on hustle culture, yep. that we don't take the time to actually stop and be present in our bodies or with ourselves or with the people that we love we're just constantly go, go, go. And we don't take the time to just revel in the beauty of the moment, yeah. you know? But, but, you know, Kelly, I think like most of the young girls, they don't know how, because it's not, it's not like they were taught, mm-hmm. right? You're only doing what you know. You're only doing what you see your friends doing. You're only doing what's popular these days, yeah. right? The, the people that you're listening to, to give you advice outside of your family is the celebrity on TikTok giving you motivation for two to three minutes yeah. and you're just agreeing, <laughs> right? Where your life is happening and you're trying to figure out how do I do this life thing where I know there's something inside of me that's different but I don't know how to express it. So you look around in your environment and you like, this shit ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> because, <Exactly. laughs> because I can't, I can't see nothing here. Right. So then you look outside and then you say, well, maybe it's out there with someone or it. And then you figure out that ain't it. And then you say, well, what is it? And you say, it's you. Well, how do I do me? if I don't know who I am and what I like Mm -hmm. and how do I get this going? And that's why the world needs you because you tell them, I know what it means to not know. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that feeling that you feel in is just that discovery of trying to figure out who you are. And that's a hard question to answer because you've been looking at other people your whole life to determine that, right? 
So they don't know how to go within. So it's it's great that you have three books that you go to the centers and that you talk to them to show them how to do that because that gives them the opportunity to look within instead of looking at everything outside of them because that's what disappoints them. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Because those people, including the people that you didn't trust who hurt you, only did what they knew. Hmm. So you can tell what their life was like, right? Can you forgive that? Yeah, in due time. They only did what they what they knew. Your mom only did the best she could with what she had. Mm-hmm. That, and, and, and you have to forgive that. Why? Because you're a mom. You're only doing the best you can with what you have in your hand right now. But you got a secret weapon. You're growing as you do it. And that's the difference. Amen to that. <laughs> right? That's the difference. And I think, I think that's the women that you serve. That's what they need, especially young women, because and if they don't get it right, they take themselves out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing, especially in the younger generation, because I remember um, being a young girl and seeing all of these amazingly beautiful models on the covers of magazines. And that's, I, I was a model uh, when I was 16, 17 years old mm-hmm. and it was a fun experience, but, uh, it really, it opened my eyes a lot more to, to the, the issues within the younger generation of women. Absolutely. And it's even, it's even in the, in the older generations as well. Like yes, it some is. women don't notice. Yeah. Oh, deep. Because, it, because it's a program. <laughs> That's right. right. We're, we're Very. programmed, mm-hmm. uh, to think, eating less, doing more cardio, um, fitting into smaller clothes is the thing. And we, we can't have stretch marks. Yep. We can't have any extra fat. We can't, we can't look bad. Otherwise we, we aren't it. That's right. Right. And that's not realistic. Mm-hmm. It's not. So we have these really high standards for ourselves from a very young age as women, as girls. Mm -hmm. And I feel like guys do too, uh, but just, just in a different sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But for women, it's really, it's all about the body. Mm -hmm. It's all about the face. It's all about the hair. It's, it's about the looks. Mm -hmm. And society does that. Yeah. And, and if you can't control your looks, what else are you going to control? What goes in and out of your body? You're going to control you're going to control what you wear. You're going to control all of these, these things external to you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that's not us, that's right. you know, the, the material things, that's not who you are. Mm. The look, how you look, that's not who you are, how you want to dress because it makes you feel good. That's who you are. Mm-hmm. How you want to present yourself. That's who you are. Absolutely. How you want to laugh and make jokes and be quirky and weird and stand out. That's who you are. That's right. It's not your body. It's not your face. It's not how much or how little you can eat. Mm-hmm. It's not about that. Right. It's about just being the best version of you that you can possibly be. And, and people want it like that too. And that's not how it comes. No, it doesn't. Girl, this is not a printing factory. Okay. (laughs) We wish, but it ain't like that. Okay. As much as society tries to paint the picture that that's what it is, it's not. Everything has its own process because you got to go through the growth period. So Kelly, let us know how to follow you. What is the website to connect with you? anything that you have so that those people who want to can connect with you. All right. You can call, uh, call me. Hey, (laughs) you can uh, actually follow me on Facebook. That's my number one platform. I I am totally open to direct messages. If you want to email me to my, um, my personal email is the Kelly Reagan at gmail.com. So T H E K E L Y. R E A G A N at gmail.com. So there's that. (laughs) Hey, Kelly, it was wonderful talking to you. 
And like I said, you know, the world needs you and these young girls do need you. It's not pressure. It's just knowing that all of the things that you went through is because that little girl is waiting on you to come and teach her how to get out of the same thing that you came out of, right? And if and if you got it up to this point, then there's so many people who just want to be where you are, right? I always tell people, T.D. Jake said, uh, there's always somebody in a hospital begging God to take your spot. Mm. Why not live? Right, right now, somebody in the hospital begging God to be you with all your problems. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Why not live? Right, so thank you so much for everything. And we definitely going to get the social media out. Make sure you follow her on uh, Facebook, reach out to her in email if you would like to. And uh, we'll definitely keep in touch, okay? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good evening. You too. Bye.